Hey everyone, welcome back. So as promised in the previous video, this one is gonna be all about master cylinders and rebuilding the calipers. So I build the front and the back caliper. I also rebuild the front and the back master cylinder. So yeah, you'll be able to see how I do that. So I'm managing to get through quite a lot of jobs now. I'm very nearly at the stage of putting the engine back in and starting to rebuild the bike. So hopefully the next video, that's what I'll be doing. So in the last video, I showed a few parts that I had Cerakoted and I showed the condition of them and obviously the job that uh, the guy had done. And yeah, they came out, came out really nicely, as you know. I also showed some of the bits that I was thinking about getting done also in a Cerakote, so the master cylinder, the calipers and a few other parts. So I'd just give you a bit of an update on what I actually decided to do in the end with them. Well, as you can see, <laughs> I had them done. Couldn't resist. Originally I talked about obviously getting these done just to match. There was nothing wrong with them as they were, they were as clean as I was going to get them. They were in good condition and obviously this is just purely cosmetic so it's just to match my the uh, the styling of the bike really. And so as the calipers as you can see I had all the pins done to match like a nice silver finish. Tops of my uh, suspension forks done and then yeah various brackets, thermostat housing, the master cylinder which I showed originally in my previous video and that's come out nice so I can get that rebuilt now. And these are the top yoke bolts and the uh, plates that hold it in place. And yeah, various, various brackets. So I'm gonna get these rebuilt, get the pistons and seals back in. And that's one job ticked off front and back, obviously. I'll rebuild the master cylinder and put the housing back together. Uh, and yeah, make some good progress. Onto the rear caliper rebuild now. I've got my kit, which consists of just the two seals, one slightly bigger than the other. Um, it's pretty obvious where they go because obviously there's one one thicker than the other in there, so <laughs> can't really get that wrong. So I'm gonna, I'll, go, I'll rebuild it. There's not a lot to this one. I'll do this one, get this out of the way first because it's the easier of the two, just because there's only the one piston to put in. But uh, yeah, I'll walk through the process. This is what I use on the bike pretty much every time the motor brake fluid. I'll drop them in there for now. So they're coated in there. They don't need to sit in there for ages. You just want to just lube them up a bit as you, before you're putting them in. So I'll put a little bit on there as well. And basically put it into, put the seals into there, a little bit of brake fluid onto that, and then obviously push it in. Just before I do, I think I'll install the pin first that I don't have to clean my gloves up. Into there. I might put a tiniest bit of thread lock on that. It had some on it when I took it off, so I'll put a tiny bit more back on it, I think. Yeah, okay, I'll just do it hand tight. I'm not gonna bother trying to torque it to a specific setting. So I'll just put this little dust boot in there. Yeah, that's it. So I've got my two seals in there, just in a bit of uh, brake fluid. I'll put the thick one in first, because that's the fluid seal, and the outer one's the dust seal. So I'll stick that one in first, just being gentle with it. Try not to get it absolutely all over the caliper if I can help it. Hang on a sec, let's just check that they are. Profile's the same, yes it is. Sometimes they have a different, like, slight slope on them or something a little bit different to being just totally straight, but it's identical both sides, so I think we're good. So there you go, hopefully the camera's picking it up, you've got the first seal in. Pretty easy really. And then next one. I don't know if that's just my eyes, but that looks like it's a little bit, tiny bit smaller than the uh, than the other one. We'll see, I'll push the piston in and see what it does. So yeah, as I say, it went in, but it was felt quite difficult to push it in 
And I'm wondering if it's just that outer seal is quite, it's just gripping quite hard, but it's, it has gone in. So I'll just put on, is it that piece in there? Again, I think that can go on either way. Yep, looks like it. So the bleed nipple putting in now. I'll just do it hand tight for now. I mean, that's the cap to go on it, but I suppose I'll put it on for now. Just don't lose it. All right, that's it. Um, so there you go, so that's how it'll look when it's on the bike. I mean, I haven't, like I said, I've not greased these up yet, but I'll do that later on. I don't want to just cover it in grease and then be sat in the garage waiting to go on the bike. Oh, there is one other bit, actually. There's the, ow, there's the, um, this piece which I can stick in. So I've replaced this. This is just a titanium one, so it should stay, and that should stay in better condition, I guess. Does look nicer in the uh, the red and black versus the so sort of like bare aluminium look and gold. When we're doing the master cylinder now, so be a case of obviously rebuilding all those parts. So that's the original, oops, the original piston, and that's my replacement new one. And I've got to get those onto the right bits. You will be able to see in the camera, but there's some slight markings on there which match to that one. So I at least know that's that one, and that one's for the bottom. So anyway, I'll sort them out and then I've got a few other bits that I need to replace as well. Some new seals and, and all that lot. So yeah, I'll start rebuilding it. First thing I think I'll try and get them to one side a minute. I'll try and get this piece in the, um, so that's where my Tygon tube will sit onto that. So I'll first this will be fairly straightforward. Putting on new seal inside. I remember it being flipping tight to get it in and out of this. Oh, actually, there we go, not too bad. I'm replacing that crusty looking bolt with just a stainless little, little one that I found. Next bit I'll put in the springs, the fat end goes in first. And then I need to get these bits onto here. So that's the top one. Well, I guess the only way I could do this is literally just to prise that over the top. I'll go for this one first, I think. Seems to be okay. It's the same one as that one anyway. That, that's like I say, that's the old one. Do the same with this one. This one's even more of a bigger bit to get it over. Go on, go on, go on. Gotcha. Right, that's that bit on. Seems to be in place. Have a quick compare. Yep, looks the same to me. Dab piston with a bit of oil all over it. Gets this way. This way first to locate into that spring. Like that. I'm gonna put a bit of brake fluid in there as well to try and help it slide in a bit easier. So obviously when I push that in, it needs to go in, but not invert itself the opposite way. Hmm, went in pretty easy to be fair. Okay, and then it'll be that piece. To the bottom of there. And then it's the circlet on top like that. 
and then that. Struggling to hold this at the same time, so apologies, apologies if you can't see a great deal. Right, the circlip symbol, I think, it's hard to tell, but I think it's slightly not where I want it to be located. Yeah, that was it. It just made a little bit of a click as it went into place. That's better. So, that feels like it should. And just the boots put on then, and that's it. The problem with this is once you've taken it apart, I can't bloody remember how it looked originally. Well, I've got it on now. It, um, yeah, it does sit there. There's like a little groove that it kind of locates into and it's the same all the way around now. So I just had to use just a bit of a screwdriver, just gently and just, just go around the edge and just nudge it down till it sits flat. I mean, the seal's obviously just stopping crap going back up inside. But... So that's working as you would expect now. That's it, so uh, that's another first. First time I've rebuilt a rear master cylinder anyway. Much easier than doing the front one, that's for sure. Hopefully this will go in a bit easier than the other ones did. Um, I am a slightly concerned it's because they've been coated, but I was assured that they will go in and it's made no difference. I mean, like I said previously, it's gone in on these. The fact that that threads in so easily would make me think that it should be fine. Put a bit of thread lock on this one again. Line that in. And the next bit, I could like pull that in whilst I'm at it. I'll just do this one whilst I'm at it, thread lock that in. Oops. this boot on there. I put a tiny bit of silicon on just the end just to make it slide in a bit easier. Because it's like trying to push a piece of spaghetti through there or something. It doesn't like moving. Poke it through. There you go. So it looks like that's the bigger and smaller piston. So like I said, I hope these go in all okay. Got them like the other ones, just sat in a bit of just a bit of big brake fluid. Ah, that's a point. I need to figure out which one, which thicker one it is, don't I? All right, so looking at it, this one looks like the larger of the two. Yeah, it is. I'll put that one in first on the left side. Right, there we go, that's one in. So that's located itself into there. Again, not sure what they can see on that, but that's sat in there nicely. There we go. A dab on that bigger piston, push that in. That one went in, <laughs> shot right in, as you just heard. Anyway, that's gone in as far as it's going to go in, so hopefully that's all okay. Right, next one. So exactly the same. Thick seal first. When you look at it, it looks like it's not going to go into that hole, doesn't it? Because it looks a lot bigger, but obviously they're quite recessed into there. There we go. And the last one. All right, so again, see they're both in nicely into that groove. So I'll give it just a bit of a clean up with some brake cleaner and 
That should hopefully, hopefully be it. Right then, that's another job done. I'm gonna look at putting this master cylinder back together now. So I bought a Brembo kit for it. Um, you have to use the official one for this. It's quite expensive, so I don't wanna mess this one up. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get it right first time. So I've given it a real good clean out because it has been blasted before it was coated. So I just want to make sure it's super, super clean. First bit will be to stick this little window side glass in the front of there. Can't seem to get an O-ring that's the same size as that in the thickness because it's quite a tight fit. But I'm really hoping I can just reuse this once and hopefully it will be okay. It has got like a clip on the back of it to, to pull it tight against the actual frame. So hopefully it will be all right. And then that piece is what is that goes out of that hole there. It's like, um, well, it looks like a little drain of some sort, I guess. So yeah, that should just press back in. So that's the first two bits. And then I'll start putting in the master cylinder pistons and stuff inside there. So that's the official Brembo kit from Honda. And that's what 45 quid buys you. <laughs> wow. A little piston piece of rubber and a spring. Anyway, comparing that to the original one, it looks slightly different to be honest. So I'm getting these mixed up. Obviously that's that spring. I'm guessing I've already reused this then because there is no replacement from that. Uh, that's obviously the boot, which I've replaced. So that's slightly different looking to that. I don't know what I can see. The ends of them are different. I'm guessing that's where, yeah, that's obviously where that one went in. So they must have changed the design slightly. So, so anyway, they did send me this massive, useless bit of rubbish from <laughs> instruction. Typical Brembo. I mean, what good is that? What good is that, look? I can't even read the writing. Anyway, I don't need that. I'd rather just try and figure out myself or use this. It's got a diagram there anyway, so it should be fairly, it's just straightforward and you just follow, in, insert it in the same way. Gonna reuse that seal, as I said before, back on there. I've just give it a bit of a clean with some silicon, so hopefully it refreshes it up a little bit. Goes back in there. Try to get it straight. Oops. It's on one side. Oh, fucking heck, why is it simplest of stuff never the simplest to do? I think that's got it, let's see. Got thumb on there as I wind that out. Well, it's in. I can only hope that that's made a decent enough seal inside. I'm gonna put this piece in now. I don't know if there's a way around for it, I'm guessing probably not. Bloody tricky to get into with these. Push that in. I think that's, that's that bit in. Checked a few things on this uh, master cylinder to make sure I've got it the right way. Firstly, as I mentioned the other day, it showed a washer there on the um, on the diagram, but that's a Nissan master cylinder, and obviously I've got a Brembo, so that's why it's not obviously making 100% sense. <laughs> so what I've got now is the spring joined to the piston. Uh, the fat end goes in first like that, and it's obviously connected. Then it's this spring on here, this light um, bit that presses in. The wide end faces outwards, the thin end faces inwards. Circle clip, then rubber boot. Apparently you can remove this spring because it can give problems uh, from what I've been told where the spring can go, try and get behind that circle clip and it gets stuck. But I'm gonna give it a go, I'll leave it on for now and see how it, see how it goes. I think the only point of that spring there is just to hold that in place because it goes onto this like that. I think it's just to keep this little presser bit from going all over the place. I've been a bit of 
clean brake fluid all over it. I think the only reason literally to do that is to stop these when it goes in that way, it's pushing against that little seal. And it's to stop that, I think, turning from inside out, obviously make it go in a bit easier. Obviously once it's full, it'll have brake fluid in anyway. Let's put a tiny bit inside there. Feel to be sticking or anything, so hopefully it'll be alright. And obviously, once I get the brake fluid in, it goes inside it and fills up that little chamber in there. It should help as well. All right, finally. So that's that in. They were a pile of crap. So was we're making it difficult i just use obviously as you saw these to do it difficult to try and obviously film it whilst whilst pressing it and holding it and all the rest of it anyway that that clips in there now and that's holding the little piece in i realized actually that on that previous when i laid these out i had this wrong i had the circlip when i laid them out in order i had the circlip here and it's actually there and then this piece goes in and kind of sits well it sits that way but it's uh yeah, floating almost and it's just this rubber thing holding it in so just that just locates into there got the rubber boot onto the little pressure pin there obviously the bigger end sticking out and then yeah i'm just gonna stick that in like i said before you can take this out but i've just tried that and i think the reason why this spring is there is just to try and retain the shape of that um rubber boot as it's pressed in a bit more and give it a bit more of a uh, make it make sure the actual rubber returns out as it's uh, pushed in because without it it kind of just sandwiches in and just loses its kind of shape so i don't know if that'll make any difference at all but for the sake of i may as well copy the way brembo had it for now that's literally it though it doesn't it don't feel like it wants to stay in place When the lever's on, it does put pressure on that pin and it kind of locks it in place. Like so. Ball back in. Hey, I'm gonna grease this bolt up, but just for now, I'm gonna stick that in like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna tie it down much, like I say, for now, because it's, it's gonna need some grease on the inside of that. It's dry as a bone. Stick that on. That was all right. And that's it. I can't, can't remember where I put these bolts. I'm gonna have to order some new ones, annoyingly, but that should be it now. Ready to put back on the bike and obviously start bleeding the brakes. All right, as you can see, I'm gonna put the suspension forks in now and then start, I basically wanna be able to tighten this nut up at the top and then tighten the uh, yoke nut at the top of there as well, steering stem. So that's 105 Newton meters I'll tighten that up to. Once I get all that lock put on, I can then set up my bars and start building the bars ready. Gonna nip this up for now, just to be able to tighten the top up. Again, I'm just gonna lightly nip it up and I'm gonna put the axle in at the bottom to line it up so that it's straight. And then I can, um, nip the rest of them up. 
they're gonna have to come off probably again anyway it's just to get this top stuff set set up the top nut right, so i've put in the the axle across the bottom just to obviously straighten the forks up and I'm just going to nip these up. So it's 40 newton meters on these, and I'm going to nip these up just by hand. They're only 20, so I'll just do them by hand because I've only got Allen key ones. But this one, I can do correctly. Okay, that's one. Next one. Snip these ones up by hand for now. So next I'm going to torque these up and then I'll torque that up last. And that's the front set then. Let's put a rubber glove over the top just to stop it from scratching the paint on it. So these are only 20 newton meters, so they shouldn't need much at all. I might actually struggle to do that one because it's got to go up to 105 and I've got nothing to grip. So I've done it just hand tight for now, so I might have to get that one done later on. Actually starting to resemble a, a bike now. I'm sick of looking at just a bare frame. Gonna get them roughly in the right sort of place just for now. <laughs> oh, I think they want to be a bit more rotated around. I don't want like the pin bull horns look all right, Dick. Just roughly putting these on where I think they're likely to be. Obviously, I'm gonna have to tweak this. I think now that I'm starting to build the bike up, it's going to be a bit of back and forth with putting stuff on, taking it off, just to get it in the right places. And obviously I've got to, I'm trying to get as much done as I can before I get the engine in, but I'm no, no doubt I'll have to take things on and off to get it hooked up properly as I want it. So I've got these Renthal grips. These are just the, I think these are the soft ones actually. Um, I was going to use them on the other bike, but I'll use them on this. So I'll stick them on. So next time I'm going to start rebuilding the bike. So I put the swing arm in, I get the engine back, so that's an exciting one, and I'll start to rebuild the rest of the frame up. So there's lots to do now and I've got quite a lot to show. So yeah, it should be a good one next time. So as always, if you've got any comments or questions about the bike, drop me a message and I'll do my best to reply. Also, I've got a lot of videos now of the bike and the different stages of the rebuild. So be sure to check them out in my playlist. Thanks everyone, see you next time.